So today we are going to winterize the Jayco 224BH. This is a 2020 model. Uh, your mileage may vary a little bit on some of the things, but the overall process is the same for most of these bunkhouse type uh, units. First thing I like to do is go ahead and open up all the low points. This is the low points over on the left hand side of the unit for like the regular city water and things. Uh, you'll notice that I got a lot of water coming out of the uh, cold water line. And that's because I've got the system open from draining the water heater. To drain the water heater, we're gonna come back to the back. We're gonna open up the access panel. We're gonna let go of the pressure release valve. And then there's a, on mine, there's a Teflon nut that goes on it right here. I've already loosened this up and drained this earlier. As you can see, it's got a little funk in there from the, uh, just the sludge that gets built up in these units. And on mine, it was a one and one sixteenth inch size uh, socket or Teflon nut to get that off. I will tell you that the first year we had this unit, it took me a little while to figure out exactly what that was because this whole unit right here for the gas to heat it up uh, was a little bit hard to get around and you couldn't get on it with anything except for a socket. So you might want to think about that before you start working on your unit. This is the low point drain for the uh, freshwater tank. Uh, we've never used a freshwater tank in this unit, so I'm just going to leave it just like it is. If you have a unit that actually has the outdoor kitchen, you want to go ahead and pull it out because you're going to need to do this as well as the outdoor shower. Inside the 224BH for the bunkhouse, underneath the bottom bunk, there is an access panel for the water heater. And you'll need to remove that little panel right there. And then you'll need to actually activate the bypass valves uh, that are on the red and the blue, which I'll show you here in a second. Okay, you'll notice that there is this little horseshoe shaped uh, bypass that goes from the cold side to the hot water side. And when you flip these up, or actually you flip them down, so it's the width of the line, the directional flow. There you go. You'll see that now the water heater is now bypassed. And we can effectively run uh, our, co our antifreeze through the system without it getting into the water heater. You do not want to put antifreeze in the water heater. Before we go any further, I want to go ahead and open up all the valves in the kitchen area and in the bathroom. That way we can get all of the uh, water out of the system using gravity. Don't forget to open up the valves on the outdoor kitchen and also on the shower. You might hear a little gurgling sound. You'll notice that when I did that, I got some more water out of the low point drain. So now that the system is completely open, gravity has been our friend and we got most of the water out of at the low point. I usually wait a couple of minutes and then I will shut these off once they've stopped dripping. Okay, so once everything's done, go ahead and start uh, buttoning the whole system back up. I start by going back to the water heater and turning off the pressure valve and reinstalling this Teflon nut. Okay, once this is basically stopped dripping, or about like it is right now, where there's just a little bit of water coming out, uh, go ahead and close these valves. That way we can pressurize the system and we can start doing our antifreeze. Also close all the other valves, including the ones inside the camper. Underneath the sink, 
there's going to be an access panel underneath there and there is this tube right here and that's going to go in here and then we're going to set this to where it actually goes all the way to the bottom and then there's a valve i'm going to show you to how to switch it behind this little panel is a valve and then there's the pump and you have to switch that valve to be able to get to draw uh, the antifreeze out so there it is you'll see it's pointing towards the antifreeze line you'll see a little bit of antifreeze left over from last year in there and now this is plugged in here and now we're going to power up the pump and start uh, running the antifreeze through the system so now we're going to turn on the water pump and only the water pump and you'll notice that it's starting to draw You'll also notice that it took quite a bit of the antifreeze. So I always suggest buying at least three gallons. Uh, I think last year I used two and a half gallons to get this done. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the cold water first. And we'll go until we get a little bit of pink. There we go. Now we're gonna do the same with the hot water. Make sure you get a good pink. There we go. Now we'll do that for the rest of the uh, valves as well. Make sure the shower is not pointed at you <laughs> and then do the same thing. Wait till you get a really good pink in the floor before you turn it off. The one place you don't want to forget is the toilet. And the final part of this step is to go to the city water connection, open it up, and there's a little mesh that's in there. You gotta pry that out ever so gently without destroying it. And then there is a valve in here that is spring-loaded, and you do not want to stand in front of it. You'll want to stand off to the side, and then you'll use your finger to press that valve. When you see pink, you're done. Turn off the water pump and then remove your jug. Let all that antifreeze drain out. Take all that back behind it. And then button it up for the winter.